Today's challenge, an unruly Rhodesian Ridgeback whose jumping and mouthing is getting out of hand. No! That's enough. That is enough. Got me there. Oh, I've got you there. I've got bruises all over my arms, scratches on my face. It has tested and pushed us to the limit. When this 38-kilo ball of muscle isn't drawing blood, he's helping himself to the family's food. Yeah, I, I do regret getting him. No! Stop! <laughs> In South London, Sarah and Martin are proud owners of Ronnie and Floyd. We are the Cook family. There's me, Martin and Zoe, and we live with two Rhodesian Ridgebacks. The first Ridgeback we ever got was Reggie. He was a dream. We then got... His half-brother, Ronnie. And unfortunately, uh, Reggie become really poorly, and we lost him in January this year. And to help us over the grieving period, we then got Ronnie's nephew, Floyd. And that's when our troubles began. Sarah and Martin brought Floyd home when he was just eight weeks old. And six months on, this 38-kilo overgrown adolescent is still play-biting. This is not part and parcel of having uh, a dog, but with Floyd, it seems to be his uh, regular meet and greet, which is not acceptable. So when I come in, he literally goes straight for your arm, and when it's a puppy, it's OK, but now he's a lot bigger, it hurts. He jumps up, pulls at the clothes, and basically he's mouthing. Huh? No! No! That's enough. That is enough. No! I'm covered with bruises. He does it with me, he does it with Martin, he does it with our daughter. No fighting! Floyd, no! Not only does Floyd jump up at his owners, he's also a regular counter surfer. What are you doing? What are you doing? He steals everything. Food. Plates. What are you doing? There was a time when he actually stole the whole chicken. It went in a nanosecond. What are you doing? You've just stolen that again. After months of training Floyd with no real change in his behaviour, the family realised something wasn't quite right. It became apparent that he had a problem with his hearing. He didn't respond to his name and other sounds and noises in the house. And after rounds of tests at the vet, they discovered Floyd is partially deaf. It was quite devastating, really. Yeah. We just tried to bring him up the way the other Ridgebacks that we'd had before, and it wasn't working. And with most of the caretaking duties falling to Martin, Floyd's behaviour is causing a serious rift in the family. I do find it stressful, yeah, um, and obviously I'm getting... I don't know a lot minute, but I'm getting a bit older, and obviously I think Physically, it's more difficult because he's a strong dog as well, and I've got two dogs to manage. <laughs> yeah, I, I do regret getting him. This isn't against the dog at all, but the impact it's had on me and our relationship. Um, it's testing. And it has tested and pushed us to the limits. I cried because he said he's got to go. Luckily, dog expert Victoria Stilwell is on the way to help this family calm their chaotic canine. Adolescent dogs can sometimes be really challenging to live with, but when you have a seven-month-old Rhodesian Ridgeback who's out of control, it can be especially difficult. They're powerful dogs, and they tend to be quite protective of their homes and families, which is why I've asked Sarah and Martin to bring Floyd outside the house so he can meet me. Morning, I'm Martin. Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is Floyd. Hello, Floyd. <laughs> I had you meet me outside because I obviously understand some of his issues, yeah. and because the hallway, as I understand, it's quite small. Yes. Yeah. So any kind of greeting behaviour as well is it all, almost magnified at the door. So okay. why don't we just go for a oh, walk? Lovely. Really? Well, he can come and sniff me. Originally bred as a scent hound in southern Africa, the Rhodesian Ridgeback takes its name from the distinctive ridge of hair along its spine. With a history of tracking wild boars, bears and even lions, this breed is extremely courageous and athletic. 
Weighing up to 38 kilos, these muscular hunting dogs need patient and consistent training to avoid becoming a domineering nuisance. And now Victoria's got to know Floyd in neutral territory, she's keen to find out more about this behaviour at home. Tell me a little bit about the jumping behaviour. Well, when we come in, he automatically, he jumps up at you and he mouths you. All right, you're at your wit's end mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. We're experienced owners, but with the deafness, which he's been to the vets for and they have confirmed that he's deaf, he with is the deaf. deafness, we cannot communicate to calm him down. Mm. Before she observes Floyd's behaviour, Victoria's keen to find out more about how they communicate when he does something they like. Do you have a hand signal for good? Good job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good job. Once you've done something good, you give him a treat and do the good job afterwards so he right. can associate a treat and the thumbs okay. up doing a good job. Okay, so good, I like that, but it, it should have been the other way. Okay. Thumbs up, then food. So, the signal, and then he gets food. So, the signal is a precursor to the food coming. I want you to do this close to you. And the signal is not close to his nose, the signal is like close to you. He can see it, but he's not tempted to pour at it and it's not close to his face. It's also gonna teach him something that he needs right now. Yeah. Which is delayed gratification. Okay. Because he does not like to wait for anything. No. no. One place Floyd's inability to wait is most evident is the kitchen. And next up, Victoria wants to see his bad table manners firsthand. I'd like to see this in action. So this is just generally what you would do. Oh, yep. no shame, no yeah. shame at all. Absolutely. Yeah. So within a second, within a second. Oh, he takes it off into his cage. All right, let's see what we can do, okay? Yep. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> the behaviour putting most pressure on the family is Floyd's jumping and play-biting. Victoria wants to recreate a typical day at home and leaves the family to settle down while she watches on a monitor outside. Triggers are when they come through the door after work, when they come downstairs, No. Floyd, no. Off. No. Floyd, no. Floyd. Wow. All right, all right, all right, that's enough. I've got him. Behave. Behave. And when he jumps and he mouths, he does it really hard. He does it so hard that it's bruised her arms and it's drawn blood on Martin. They can't live like this. Just awful. I've definitely seen enough of that. Observations over, it's time for Victoria's discerning diagnosis. I can see what your problems are. When you come down the stairs or when you come in from work or when your daughter comes in from work, all this adrenaline and all of it flows through his pores in his mouth. And his mouth has become the way he communicates. Number one, looking at your face all the time. Okay. So that's why, again, he when he's so excited, he jumps. Because it's a really great way of seeing your facial expressions. With deaf dogs, when the environment changes for us, we can hear something happening. We can hear the doorbell ring or someone come through the door or something. He doesn't. Contrasts happen really fast. Yeah. From one thing to another, suddenly he's just lying on the floor fine and then suddenly you walk down and you walk in the room, whoa, mum's here. So, all of that energy that's going up needs to go somewhere else. Okay. Number two, your hand signals, he's a, he's a ridgeback, they love to chase things. And so this, these just become great chew toys. And that's why like that. he's focusing all of his, all of it on your arms. I mean, look at your arms. I, know, I, know. Mm. I would also like to clear your communication up a bit with him. So 
clearer hand signals how you deliver the food to him. He's a dog that does not like delayed gratification. He wants it right there, right now. Mm. So we need to teach him, hey. You gotta wait a bit. Gotta wait a bit. Mm. I want you to have realistic expectations though. This is gonna be hard and it might take a while, but don't give up on him yet. <laughs> I think he's just telling me who the star of the show is. This is quite a view. <laughs> In South London, Victoria's helping rambunctious Ridgeback Floyd's jumping and mouthing behaviour. Since Floyd's partially deaf, first up, Victoria wants to help Sarah and Martin improve their communication skills with him. The jumping is a huge problem because he jumps, doesn't get what he wants, mouths, game, right? Yeah. So that's the sequence that he does it in. So. You've got some great hand signals. Yeah. But the hand signal for enough stop, no. That's is, going. <laughs> it is. It's expansive yeah. and it's wonderful. Yeah. To go grab. So from now on, your hand signal for stop is this. Okay. You're holding your hands, arms close to your body. They're yeah. no longer flying around. It's a very clear signal. You're not turning your back on him, but you're saying enough. Okay. And you're not looking at him, looking ahead. Okay. But you're basically just like, no, we're done. Because he's partially deaf and only stimulated by what he can see, Floyd gets overexcited by big hand gestures. The trick is to keep it small and calm. Remember the signal yep. for we like it, yes? Always goes with the, the, it's the before signal first. The throw, you throw the food. Always, always. And he's not getting rewarded for jumping up. Take my place and you yep. can do some of that. Yes, so, yeah. Good boy. By switching the order of the gesture and the food reward and keeping his hand closer to his body, Martin is helping Floyd to keep all four paws on the floor. That's it, now, beautiful. Oh, you've got it. <laughs> now it's time for Sarah to have a go. Fabulous. Yeah. Do it again. Oh, very good. Boy. Very good. So far, so good. But when Sarah starts to move, Floyd seems tempted to jump. Hands together. That's it. He made a decision mm. to sit without wow. being asked. Yeah. Do you see? Wow. <laughs> And even, I don't care, if this becomes his sit, cue, Fine. good. Yeah, that's better than jumping. OK, of course, easy to do here. Yep. Even though this is a different space, easy to do here. But we build the skill up when it's calm so that he can use it when, it's, when he's kind of frenzied. Yeah. Right? Yeah. OK. Thank you. That was... Uh... Good job. Yeah, well Good done. Boy. The minute the fun come up, he was waiting for the action where he's going to get a treat. It's something so simple that you wouldn't think about it. But when you watch it in practice, it's obvious. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> Back at the house, and it's time to address Floyd's counter surfing. Victoria tables a plan. All right. So I'm coming here, and I want you guys to sort of settle over there. OK. So here's what I want to do. So I'm going to be the keeper of the food. Right. He already smells this. Yeah, he's he seen it. He sees it, and he smells it. I want him to look at the food and to look away at you or on the floor. Yeah. OK? So here we go. If he comes towards the food. When Floyd moves towards the food, Sarah must get his attention by gently tapping him on his side and, and showing him that she has food in her hand. That's it, good. By repeating this action, she's showing Floyd if he makes the decision to turn away from the food on good. the table, he's guaranteed a reward. Now wait for him to look away because he looked at the food and looked away. 
wait for him to do that. Yep. He did it again. Yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's it. Take a step. Good. Love it. You can work in him like that. Ooh, fantastic. Looking at it. You could see him thinking. You could literally see him. The longest he's ever looked at food <laughs> and not made any move towards it since we've had him. Floyd has done well to avoid temptation, but now it's time to up the ante with food with even more flavour. Pack of salami and cheese. I'm quicker than he is. Done. Nicely managed. It's nothing. It's gone. No. Down. That's why you're going to need this lead. It's mm -hmm. really important. We don't want him to be successful. This. It's hard now because with salami and cheese. Strong, oh. strong flavour. Did it. Brilliant. Brilliant. So this is how you practice. Yep. Then you can gradually add some stuff that is actually cooked. That's good. You've got a lot of homework to do. We have got loads of homework to do. I can't believe how much he picked that up, can you? And how quickly. The f you could see him, his mind ticking over and you could see him trying to make the right decision. Training over, there's just time for one final pep talk from Victoria. You know Rhodesian Ridgebacks, but he has the added difficulty of being hearing impaired. So that does make things harder. I just hope now that I've been able to sort of pivot to you a little bit so that you can communicate with him easier and cope with his behavior. I think that what the training sessions have taught us is that I think if you hadn't have come, I don't think we'd have coped anymore. And it's been a massive learning curve for us and quite an emotional journey, actually. Yeah. Um, I, I can't find words, so I'm gonna get emotional. It's thank you enough. You're welcome. Thank no, you. Did give me a hug. <laughs> Come on, bring it in. Over the next few weeks, Victoria leaves Sarah and Martin with their homework. They've installed a baby gate to discourage Floyd from jumping up. And with regular training to stop food stealing, he's making progress. To check the family are still on course, Victoria's making one final visit. Tell me how it's been going. Well, as you can probably see from our arms, it's uh, definitely working for me. And the stress levels for both of us, I Reduced. think, have really come down. And I think he seems a lot calmer. One person Floyd loved to jump up on and play bite was Sarah and Martin's daughter, Zoe. So if you come in, See, see, now see. he can't hear us. No, he can't. And all of a sudden, he's going to see us. So get yeah. ready to do the yeah. gate. Yeah. Good. And do your thing. Wait. Good boy. And it's fabulous to see you come through that gate. So yeah. <laughs> and he's not jumping on you. And you're being firm but you're being fair, you're being yeah. kind. The other thing, the food, stealing. Tell me about that, because uh, it's very it's, hard, it's very hard. It's work in progress, yeah. yes. providing we, we make sure that the surfaces are clear um, and keep an eye on him. The instances that we've had of him stealing food have certainly reduced. It's nothing unless you work at it. Yeah. Yeah. We all seem to be now working as a family because we've yeah. got a, 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 you know, a routine now. Um, and it's made such a difference, and I don't think we could have done it without your help. Well, I'm, uh, I'm honoured, and I had great people to work with, and a great dog. Now he's a totally different dog. It's amazing. <laughs> he's definitely staying. We're gonna, uh, we're on a long road, aren't we, with, mm. with training? Sorry, with you. No, but he's staying. When I first met the Cook family, they were at their wits' end. 
Floyd's behavior was out of control to the point where they were thinking of giving him up. But with the training techniques I gave them, they've worked so hard. So coming back here and seeing the amazing improvements that they've all made, and to hear the fact that Floyd's not going anywhere, that's music to my ears. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.